But yeah, it's really nice camping in hot weather. It was <laughs> Meow! Hoople's cat and Wolfie Terrier in a car park. Good morning, I slept sort of okay up a couple of times. It's not actually that cold this morning. Uh, there's a bit of a breeze still. If you really have to poop out here, wet wipes are really good. They last forever and uh, they're quite cheap. And you don't need that many if you do a full squat and just squeeze it out. Generally by folding these over I can use two of these for every poop. But what you should never do is leave wet wipes or even Kleenex in the environment. Put the used ones in a doggy bag and carry it out with you and dispose of properly. We've all been on nature hikes and seen scattered toilet paper and diapers and wet wipes everywhere. Not good. This has been very good for my soul. I'm a recent convert to these. I'm going to show you something I do at home. I loop it over one end so when I get to put them in the forest and remove them it's really fast and easy and you can even do it with one hand. Now why bother using these? If you're going to go off the main trail even for a few minutes to have a poop or a pee and you're that way out and you go quite a distance you can get lost and people have in fact died doing that on trail hikes in the States. This was the heartbreaking moment searchers found the remains of missing hiker Geraldine Largay. There's Nobody else wanted to bring her home more than we did. The 66-year-old woman from Tennessee lost her way along the Appalachian Trail in Maine, looking for a bathroom in 2013, two years later. Is that her driver's license? Yep. Dirty and larger. The medical examiner believes she survived in the wild for about 26 days before dying from starvation. Her numerous texts for help didn't go through and she knew she was going to die. She's in a place just off the trail that was kind of the last place we hadn't gotten to. On the last days of her life, she wrote on a torn out page from her journal, when you find my body, please call my husband George and my daughter Carrie. It will be the greatest kindness for them to know that I am dead where you found me, no matter how many years from now. A gut-wrenching goodbye from an avid hiker who just lost her way. It's it's hard, and uh, I really I feel for the family. They've just gone off the trail. They haven't left the bag on the trail. Just went off. They were on their own. Went for five minutes into the forest and found the dead. If I'm wandering away from the camp without my bear spray and I think I'm being chased by a bear, which is much more likely than actually to be chased by a bear. <laughs> My zone of concentration, my zone of interest will really, really decrease. Having these visual markers to lead me back to my camp is a very good idea. And the other thing is if I don't check in with Kitty and I don't show up and Kitty activates EMS or comes to look for me herself, these will lead them to my camp quite quickly because she knows where I went in off the trail. All right, all packed up, leaving no trace. So at least for this morning, we have summer again in fall. So this is the 31st of October, Halloween. I haven't yet turned into a pumpkin. Gonna hike out, left the place pristine. That's the way to do it. And if I have to wait at the far end, I'm gonna use some of my garbage bags to pick up some of the garbage that's there. I really like this pack. There's a couple of things I need to fix on it. I did adjust this, but I think I need to do it again. It just doesn't seem positioned correctly. Very easy to do, actually. The water balls, I can't reach them. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna rig up a hydration pack. Either on the outside, which shouldn't actually be that difficult, or on the inside, which might have some problems because there's not much capacity in this. Or actually just put it in there and pipe it around. There's a lot of capacity in this. Designed for three water balls. Well, I've been hiking for about an hour and a half and not too much further to go. And I can now hear the road. So remember, when you lose a map and you're navigating, Look, listen and smell. You might smell things, you might hear things, you might see things that clue you in that you're actually on the right trail because you don't want to get lost. Getting lost really sucks. <laughs> but this one day trip taught me I am not pack ready at all. This pack is kind of killing me with the weight and it's not too overloaded. Last few years I've just been shoving stuff in a kayak and moving it out of the kayak to a campsite on a beach so I have kind of lost my grit in carrying a pack. But that's easily fixed. I have a forest trail on our property that starts at the back door so I can go once or twice or three times a week around the property with the loaded pack. That'll be about 30 minutes of time. That actually will get me used to it and uh, should be a good way of training to carry a pack again because I'm really not pack ready. I'm shocked at that. It's also cripplingly hot today uh, and like I say not being able to reach these water bottles is a major major negative. I'm gonna have a nice drink of water now. I found this 
actually on this trail this year so I'm using this to keep a Bic lighter on me. I have multiple in the pack. Once I got on the trail proper and got out of the bush I was able to put stuff on the outside so I was carrying the camera so the camera is now attached to the outside because in bush don't have stuff dangling off your packs it's not a good idea and if you do like this thermometer have it tucked so it's not going to catch and snag. All right onwards. I'm at the dark sky area waiting for Kitty and Wolfie. They should be along in about 20 minutes or so. And I just want to tell you something that's of limited use but might be important to you in a disaster. That's a dark sky area. Dark sky areas are there because there's no real cities or big towns anywhere near them. This has two porta potties. Toilet roll, hand sanitizer in a disaster. Again, hand sanitizer and there ain't no toilet roll. I just want to draw your attention to something I noticed and I think this is going to be quite common from now on with park buildings and dark sky areas and similar things and even trailheads. Look at that building, what do you see? I'll give you a clue. Solar panels. Most of the buildings just the walls to stop the lights from the vehicles affecting them at night and there is one little shed and you're not allowed in there. But I noticed two of these. I assume they're there for motorised telescopes. So if I was close to this site in a disaster and I needed a bit of power, I needed to charge something up and I wasn't able to do so myself, I don't think anybody else is going to come here to do it. Now I don't know whether they're working or not, but it's an easy test, but I'm not going to do it. But even if they're not working, crew bearing you into there and turning it on is pretty straightforward. This all goes back to knowing your area and thinking outside of the box. You should be doing that all the time. Hopefully these sort of practices will never ever be used. But if they are, it's nice to know things that other people might not realise. Gives you an advantage. Of course if there's a disaster and it's a massive one and you need to survive, you need to look at things like this. How to build your own chimney out of stone or take over one that's already built. For the simple reason that wood burning will absolutely be saving you. Well that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. The wind noise is pretty bad. But I really got what I wanted out of this and that's the important thing. Anyway guys and girls, remember if the sign says no camping, don't camp there. But if you are going to camp in an area you're not allowed to camp, make sure that you treat it with absolute respect and leave it in a better state than when you entered it. That's it from me. Toodles. This has been a 2024 Wolfie Terrier hiding in the gear production.